Hello, and welcome to Ashford and St. Peter's Hospital NIGS Foundation Trust presentation, Staying Fit During Pregnancy and Labor. This session has been created by the Pelvic Health Physiotherapy Team to help you manage well through pregnancy. Today, we're going to cover some of the changes that happen during pregnancy and tips to help you go through it, as well as how to manage aches and pains if you experience them. And at the end of the presentation, we have some helpful tips on how to cope with labor. Pregnancy can be a really joyful and special time. However, we also know that it is tough and can feel like hard work at times. So I would like you to take a few minutes and allow yourselves to think about all the things that might have been bothering you. There are many common things that occur in pregnancy that bother a lot of women, and we hope this video will help you address some of these common issues. Some common areas to feel discomfort during your pregnancy are your back and pelvis, but also your ribs and neck. You can also notice an increase of swelling and fluid in your arms and legs. This fluid can compress nerves around your wrists and cause you pain and pins and needles in your hands, particularly at night. It is common to have more cramps in your legs during pregnancy. This happens because of fluid retention. Have you ever experienced bladder leakage? As your baby grows, your pelvic floor can become weaker, which can impact in the control of your bladder. How about constipation? Constipation happens because your digestive tract slows down to an increase of progesterone, which is one of the hormones released during pregnancy. Finally, but not less important, you might find you have some trouble sleeping, both finding a comfortable position and waking up regularly. What happens to your body when you're growing a baby inside? As your bump grows, your center of gravity is affected, changing the way your muscles work and this impacts the way you move. Your weight increases and it is normal to gain between 22 to 28 pounds or 1.5 to 2 stones. This will often put further pressure on your joints and muscles. Your breasts get bigger which can affect your upper back and rib cage. As the hormone relaxing increases in the body, your ligaments get softer to prepare you for delivery. This can affect the stability of your joints. This happens specially on your pelvis, but can affect any other joint. With all these changes happening in a small amount of time, it is normal that your muscles have a hard time adjusting. Your tummy muscles and pelvic floor can get weaker with the increased load from baby's growth and this further reduces your control and strength around the back and pelvis. As some of your muscles start to weaken or work less effectively, it can place a higher workload on other areas, which can lead to pain. If you think about a team working towards the same goal, someone goes off sick, the other team members have to take on the extra work. The same happens with your muscles. So, what can you do to help? Engaging in gentle exercise, pacing yourself and changing the way you do your activities can help reduce the symptoms. As you might have noticed already, your medication options are limited. You can take paracetamol as is completely safe for baby, but any other medications we recommend that you discuss with your GP. You can opt to use ice or heat instead. You can use ice or heat four to five times a day for 10 to 15 minutes, but make sure you're careful when using it and don't put it on your bump. Make sure you wrap it in a towel or t-shirt so it's not directly on your skin. You can choose to go for a pregnancy massage or ask your birth partner to give you a regular massage. The safest position to go to sleep after 28 weeks is on your side either left or right, as research don't recommend falling asleep on your back. Try to use pillows to make you more comfortable sleeping and keep your bump aligned with the side of the bed. You can use as many as you want and you don't have to buy any special pillow. A good tip if you like your pillow in a specific shape is to tape it into that shape so you don't spend time shaping it at night. Also, make sure you support your back while sitting. How can you move well during pregnancy? In the following videos, we're going to show you some ways to help you move better and reduce the strain on your back and pelvis. Getting in and out of bed. To lay down, sit on the side of the bed and go down on your hand and elbow. Then squeeze your lower abdominal muscles and swing your legs up into the bed, keeping your knees together. To get out of bed, 
Keep your knees together and swing them off the bed and push yourself up with your hand and elbow, squeezing your lower abdominal muscles. Getting in and out of the car. When parking the car, if possible, try to find somewhere that allows you to fully open the door. To make it easy to get in and out, you can place a plastic shopping bag in your seat beforehand. Then you can hold the side of the car and lean forwards to sit down. Squeeze your low abdominal muscles to twist your hips and roll the legs into the car, keeping your knees together. To get out of the car, roll your legs out, keeping your knees together and squeezing your low abdominal muscles, then lean forwards and use your hands to get up. Getting in and out of a chair. To sit down, fill the back of the chair with the back of your knees. Lean forwards and bend from your hips and knees to go down while squeezing your low abdominal muscles. To get up, have your feet hip wide apart and your heels underneath your knees. Lean forwards and push up through your heels, squeezing your low abdominal muscles. Use your hands to support either on the seat or on the arms of the chair. Lifting. Avoid lifting as much as possible. If you need to lift something, Place a foot near the object you have to lift and kneel onto your knee, bending from your hips and knees and keeping your back straight. Hold the object close to your body and use your legs to push you up, squeezing your low abdominal muscles. If able, hold on to a chair or table to help you get up. If you have other children that need to be lifted or carried, ask them to step into a sofa, chair or the bottom of the stairs so you avoid bending as much. Now let's move to more static positions like standing and sitting. While standing, remember that your back and bottom muscles can often be overworked and tight. To avoid this, keep an upright position and gently tuck your tailbone underneath you while squeezing your tummy muscles slightly. Make sure you keep your legs and particularly your knees relaxed and soft and not in a locked position when doing this. While sitting, bring your bottom all the way against the back of the chair or sofa, so the chair is helping supporting you better and allow your muscles to relax more. Keep your knees at the same height of your hips or slightly lower and place a small roll towel or cushion behind the curve of your lumbar spine. Your pelvic floor muscles are a group of muscles that run from the pubic bone at the front to the coccyx at the back and spread to your sitting bones. They support all the contents of your tummy, your bladder, womb and baby, your vagina and your rectum. They are responsible for maintaining your blood and bowel continence, avoiding prolapse of your tummy organs and providing pleasure during intercourse. They also work alongside your tummy and bottom muscles to help providing stability to your back and pelvis. During labour, they also help progressing baby through the birth canal. So it is important to keep them flexible and strong. We recommend doing pelvic floor exercises from the beginning of your pregnancy to maintain good muscle function. To work these muscles, squeeze your muscles from the back passage as if you're stopping yourself and passing wind and bring that sensation forward towards the pubic bone as if you're stopping yourself and passing urine. Then imagine lifting these muscles like a suction motion. Aim to do both short and long holds three to six times a day. The short ones are a quick and strong squeeze and let go. Imagine your pelvic floor muscles as a lift going up to the fourth floor with a squeeze and then back to the ground floor when relaxed. Try to repeat this 10 to 20 times. For the long ones, hold the squeeze on the fourth floor for 10 seconds and then let go. Repeat this 10 times. Try to time your pelvic floor exercises with your daily routine, for example, when you clean your teeth or at meal times. To remind you to do these exercises and help you do them, you can download the Squeezy app. This app has been developed by a pelvic health physio with the NHS. This link can be used to download the app. Gentle movement and maintaining your flexibility and strength for the whole body is also important in pregnancy. There are loads of benefits of doing regular exercise. It improves your strength, cardiovascular fitness and flexibility. It also releases endorphins, which can help your mood, help you relax and sleep better. The best part is that it can reduce the length of labor and help with postnatal recovery. If you don't have any medical conditions, the guidelines recommend doing 30 minutes of moderate exercise daily 
or most days. If you look at this scale, aim to stay in the green zone. We recommend increasing your breathing rate, but you should be able to talk in full sentences. If you never exercise before, then you can start with 15 minutes three times a week and increase this gradually to daily 30 minute sessions. To choose the type of exercise, aim to do light strength work and cardiovascular exercise, but avoid high impact exercises if you never undertaken this form of exercise before. Remember, if you have a medical condition, speak to your GP before starting any new type of exercise. While exercising, keep well hydrated, increase intake of nutritious foods and keep sessions to no more than 45 minutes. Some examples of recommended exercise are yoga, pilates, swimming or aqua classes and gym ball stretches. You do not have to attend a pregnancy specific exercise class, although there are lots around and can be a great way to meet other mums to be. If you are attending a non-pregnancy class, you might need to adapt the exercises slightly and you should inform the instructor. Pregnancy can have its stressful moments, so it's very important to find moments every day to relax, even if it's just for a few minutes. Find your own way of relaxing because it will help you cope better with all the changes happening, help your muscles to relax and reduce stress. It is also a good strategy to practice for when labour comes, and if you already know what helps you relax and are used to do it, it will come more naturally during labour. So how do you relax? With a good book, a nice treat, exercise or breathing exercises, listening to some music, finding a quiet space or having a warm bath. Whatever it is, go and practice. It will make you feel better. For many women, the thought of labour can be worrying and uncertain. There are lots of helpful things that you can do to prepare yourself, which will help to reduce stress and anxiety around it. Make sure you keep relaxed and positive by using distraction and breathing techniques. If you're worried about experiencing pain, think about putting a positive spin to your pain. Keep in mind that the pain means that you are closer to meeting your baby. Some signs that your labour has started can be waters breaking, having a show, which is a plug of mucus and blood, starting to have back pain and a need to open your bowels. Pain is caused by the contractions of your uterus that happen so your cervix can dilate. This pain comes from a raised temperature and pressure as your tissues are stretching. In the early stages of labour, these contractions are irregular varying in strength and length. They are responsible for dilating your cervix up to 4 cm. At this stage, you should call your birth partner and time your contractions. Focus on pain control and being calmed and relaxed. For pain, you can take paracetamol, use a tense machine, have a warm bath or shower and have your muscles massaged. Make sure you eat and drink enough to keep your energy levels up. Because of this, it is important to try to sleep if it's night. And if it's day, have periods of rest, watching a film or reading. But also move around because upright positions stimulate your cervix dilation when baby pushes against it. After your cervix has dilated 4 cm, you enter the active labour stage, where the contractions are more regular and similar in length and strength. For a first delivery, your cervix will tend to dilate 1 cm per 1 to 2 hours. When you've had 2 to 3 contractions in 10 minutes, it is time to call your midwife, but keep using the same techniques as in the previous stage. If you need stronger pain medication, you can discuss this with your midwife. There are several pain relief options from paracetamol to an epidural, but it is important to remember to try to keep calm and to help manage the pain. Remember that upright positions stimulate your cervix, helping to move things along. There are two approaches to labour. With the first cycle you see here, you can either focus on your pain, causing your stress and anxiety levels to increase, meaning your body goes into fight or flight mode, where your cortisol and adrenaline levels increase. This response leads to your uterus not getting as much oxygen to the muscle, and so it builds lactic acid, which cause cramps. These additional cramps lead to less effective contractions and more pain. It is known that by keeping 
relaxed, we can avoid this surge in adrenaline and cortisol. And so the uterus has more oxygen and our contractions become more effective. To do this, we need to try to accept the labor and keep in mind that the pain means you're closer to meet your baby. The second approach is the positive cycle. When you're happy, your body releases endorphins, which are your love hormones. Endorphins reduce your awareness of pain and help you keep relaxed. When this happens, your body increases production of oxytocin, which helps regulate your contractions and move things along. A good way to help you relax is having a massage. Your birth partner can use the heel of their hand to apply deep pressure up and down your back muscles or do small circular motions on a specific tense region of your back. Another way is using their entire palms, stroking your back muscles up and down. This is extremely helpful to relax big muscles and it's a bit softer than the previous technique. Your partner can also use their thumbs in circular movements to target smaller areas in your shoulder blades or the region between your back and your bottom muscles. Towards the end of your first stage of labor, you may enter a phase known as transition, which may result in a strong desire to push before the cervix is fully dilated. You might experience a change of your emotional state, feeling shaky, sweaty or nauseous. And your midwife might suggest alternative positions, such as the position in the bottom right of the screen, to lessen this urge. It is important to listen to your midwife throughout labor, as their advice will help progress things easier for you. Breathing is a great coping skill. During labor, you might notice that you are over-breathing or holding your breath to respond to painful contractions. There are two simple breathing techniques you can try that can help you remain in control of your breathing. On the first, try to take a deep breath as the contractions build up. Breathe in for the count of two and out for the count of three. You can imagine the contractions as if you're climbing a hill or a series of rolling waves. Let's try this together now. For the second, use a blowing technique at the peak of your contraction. Use short, swift breaths and imagine you're blowing a piece of cotton wool a feather away from your lips. Give it a go with me now. And with the delivery of the head, you might want to pant while you do little pushes. Let's try this breathing technique. Remember to keep your breathing slow and controlled. The way you position yourself during labor is important and can affect how your labor progresses. As you can see in these pictures, lying on your back is not the most efficient to deliver a baby as gravity is not assisting you. Instead, adopting an upright position allows gravity to help baby move along. Here are some options you might like to consider. It can be good to practice these positions at home prior to delivery to see what feels most comfortable for you and it will help you remember them once in labor. A common fear you might have during labor is opening your bowels. Rest assured that midwives are very much used to this and you probably won't even know if it happened. You might be concerned about tearing. To help prevent tears, you can start perineal massage from week 34 to 36. Find a comfortable, relaxed place to sit or to lie down. Use a small amount of natural oil or lubricant and make U-shaped movements at the bottom part of your vagina entrance towards the rectum. Apply firm pressure on the tissues so you're able to feel a stretch. This can be uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be painful. You can start with one thumb and when this is more comfortable, move to two thumbs. You can also stretch the tissues down towards your bottom and feet at several points for 15 to 20 seconds. Aim to do this three to five times a week for five to 10 minutes. 
who should do pelvic floor exercises after delivery? That's right, everyone. Even if you have a cesarean, your pelvic floor muscles are going to get weaker during pregnancy. So it is extremely important to start them straight away after delivery. But you should wait for your catheter to be removed if you've had one inserted. This early start of pelvic floor muscle exercises and continuing daily for at least three months will help reduce the chance of having bladder or bowel incontinence or prolapse. It is important after delivery of any type to pace yourself and avoid heavy lifting for at least six weeks. A feeling of heaviness down below in the vagina or perineum or pulling across your C-section scar means you've done too much. When you do have to lift, you should try to squeeze your pelvic floor muscles as you lift. You should also get into the habit of doing this before coughing, laughing and sneezing as it provides increased support. After six weeks, you can return to low impact activity such as Pilates, yoga, swimming and cycling. High impact exercise that involves any jumping or running, you should wait for at least 12 weeks. This includes things like jogging, Zumba or tennis. It is important before returning to high impact exercise, you should have spent some time building up your strength through low impact exercise first to prepare you for this. During pregnancy, your tummy muscles have to part through the baby to grow. After delivery, your muscles will take some time to recover their strength and position. In order to encourage your abdominal muscles to heal, it is important you do not do sit-ups too early, start with yoga pilates type exercises, and if you notice building or doming, speak to your GP or midwife. We have come to the end of the presentation. In summary, remember to pace yourself. It is important to keep active, but have regular breaks and rest. Be mindful of how you lift and bend, making sure you keep a good posture with your activities. Breathing is a great tool to distract you from pain and help you relax. You can also use heat, massage or movement to help managing pain during pregnancy or labour. It is important to keep relaxed during labour. Remember oxytocin. So, start practising now. Exercise is fundamental to keep your muscles strong and flexible, so find something that you enjoy and fits in your routine. And don't forget your pelvic floor exercises. They'll reduce the risk of bladder and bowel incontinence and prolapse. You can start this advice from today. Remember that you can discuss a referral to pelvic health physiotherapy with your midwife or GP. If you're experiencing back and pelvic pain in your pregnancy, changes to your abdominal muscles that are not resolving in six weeks post delivery or changes to your bladder and bowel control and pelvic support that do not improve with this advice. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all worth it. Thank you.